My name is Buma Yayi. I was born on the 24th of September 1969. That is what I was told by my parents. In the thick of the Nigerian Civil War, somewhere in the eastern part of Nigeria. And after the Civil War, my parents got back to um, Port Harcourt when Nigeria liberated Biafra and the old eastern region. And we got settled um, somewhere in the old Port Harcourt Township around um, Hospital Road. I started my primary school at um, Baptist Day Primary School on Agri Road. My mother used to be a teacher there, so that's where I started my primary school. Although I eventually completed my primary school at um, Churchill Road, State School 2, Churchill Road. From there, I proceeded to the very famous Baptist High School and attained my West African school certificate after completing five years of post-primary um, education, that is secondary school, what we used to call secondary school. That was in 1986. And in 1986, same year, I got admission into the River State University of Science and Technology, now River State University, to study accountancy. I did accountancy from the year 1987 to 1991 and graduated with a second class honors in accountancy education. I went further to um, serve my country, Nigeria, which is my youth service in Lagos, where I worked for Shell Development Petroleum Company in Lagos as a youth copper. I did my primary assignment in Shell and by the end of 1991-92, I finished my youth service call and I came back to Port Harcourt. In less than six months, I got employed as an accountant, as an accounts officer. That's what they used to call us then, accounts officer, with the then Weco Engineering Company. They used to um, be in the oil servicing industry. I worked in the department of um, what they called um, AMH, which used to handle the sales of electrodes and heavy duty construction equipments as an accounts officer for some number of years, which is about two years. And I got another employment as a senior accountant in Reeve Biscuits Manufacturing Company. In Reeve Biscuits, I was promoted in the year 1994 to Chief Accounting Officer at a very tender age of 25. I was already at the peak of the accounting profession. Unfortunately, Reeve Biscuits, um, as one of those manufacturing companies that couldn't see the light of the day with as a result of um, economic depressions and recession in Nigeria, most manufacturing companies failed and Rivisket was one of them. So we went back to the unemployment market. At the tender age of 26, it was just like being retired. But I took the bull by the horn and decided to further my education. In 1996, I went back to River State, River State University of Science and Technology to study banking and finance this time at the master's degree level. And I completed that in 1998 with my MBA. So in 1998, I tried to um, get a job at the banking sector because that has been one of my dreams to work as a banker. Having gone to further my education and achieving my MBA I felt the only place I could work was a bank. But another recession in Nigeria. Banks were merging, banks were folding, banks were having problems and all that. So the employment into the banking sector became difficult. 
And so instead of waiting forever to have a banking job, I decided to work again as an accountant, this time around with a, a multinational firm called Dredging International. In Dredging International, I became the project accountant in most of their offshore projects. I was project accountant in um, LNG Train 6 Bonnie. I stayed there for about six to eight months before I was transferred to Bayasa State, now called Bayasa State then, to oversee the accounting function of dredging while they were carrying out the project of what they call the Ninja Delta University today. I was the project accountant in 2001. I stayed there for another two, three years and got transferred again to another project in Delta State, which is the um, liquid to gas project in Chevron. I was project accountant there for another six months before I decided to join politics in 2003. So in 2003, I felt the time has come to serve my people. That was the appropriate time for me to join politics. So I joined politics and by the grace of God, the good people, very good people of Ogubolo State constituency voted me to represent them in the River State House of Assembly. So between 2003 and 2007, I was in the River State House of Assembly where I served as the Chairman House Committee on Sports with the former governor of River State, Rotimi Amichi, as the speaker then, and Dr. Peter Odili as the governor of River State. In 2007, we left the House of Assembly, having completed my tenure of four years. And with the whole political quagmire in River State, which is now history, in October 2007, the Supreme Court gave a judgment that um, Rotimi Amici be, um, should be sworn in as governor of River State. And after his swearing in, sometime in 2008, he appointed me as Commissioner of Sports. So I served as Commissioner of Sports under Rotimi Amici from 2008 to 2011. And in 2011, due to political differences, I left the administration of Rotimi Amici, even though I was still appointed special advisor on pollution. I did that for some number of years, and I felt that job was not challenging enough for me, having been a member of the River State House of Assembly. So I proceeded immediately to the University of Abuja to study law. And by 2015, I finished my law program and I came back to River State. And that same year, I was appointed commissioner again by the present governor, Nyesom Ezeon Wike. That position I held from 2015 to 2019. So that's a brief of my profile. It, it was great fun, I must tell you, it was great fun because we had no fears. We had, we had no challenges. The sky was our limit. We could walk from Old Portacot Township to as far as mile one, Diob. For me, that, that's what even gave me the courage to love sports. I used to walk as, a, as, a, as, as, as an 11 year old boy from Old Portacon Township to um, Portacon Temporary Stadium, which is now called um, Portacon Club. I used to walk there to watch the then Sharks Football Club play matches. I can remember a couple of matches I went there to watch as an 11-year-old boy. In fact, sometimes it would be diffi so difficult for us that we don't have transport money. 
If we cannot walk, we jump the train. Risky ventures, all because we wanted to watch um, our darling team, Sharks Football Club then. But that's to tell you that Potter Court was very safe, no challenges, you can walk anywhere, you can trek anywhere, you can do anything you like and get back home safely, no problems, no fear of being kidnapped, no fear of being hijacked on the road, no security challenges. Every, if, in fact, everything was just going on smoothly. But that was then when we were growing up. I think I, I, that, that passion of um, a sports lover came right from secondary school. My seniors were active footballers, what we used to call school fathers those days. I had a school father in my first year in secondary school, which was, who, who was an ardent football player, and he also played for Nigeria. His name is Benjamin Ezeko, so he was one of my school fathers, and he used to take me to watch them play. So I fell in love with the game of football. In, when he left sometime in 1983, I also got involved again with another senior who also loved football, Eric Alagua. And Eric Alagua introduced me into not just playing, but taking the game of football serious, you know. So all through my secondary school education, I've been from one sport to the other, from one senior teaching me one sport to the other and all that. So I, 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 I came to loving football and sports and it became my passion. So eventually when I find myself around that area of sports, I knew that it wasn't um, a mistake. I, I don't think that's a fair statement to make about politicians. It's only an irresponsible man that will neglect his family because the family is the nucleus of whatever anybody would be. For me, my family is very important and nothing will make me neglect my family. But I agree, sometimes the job will be very pressing, you might uh, be very busy that um, the family need to understand the pressures of work and politics, but it doesn't amount to neglecting the family. The family will remain the family and we, as, as an individual, I will make sure that my family gets the best of my attention at every time. The switch has not been very easy because, you know, in accounting, we follow a lot of procedures and standards, you know, but in politics, sometimes white can become black and black can become white. But um, all that uh, be the same, we, 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 I try to maintain a lifestyle that my yes is my yes, my no is my no. If I can do something, I say I can do it. If I cannot do it, I say I cannot do this because of, I give reasons why this cannot be done. You know, so we, we, I, I try as much as I can to make sure that um, my political life is not affected um, by what the society thinks of politicians. I try to make sure that um, while dealing with people, I deal with them to the best of my conscience, to the best of my ability, to the very essence of why I'm in politics, to make sure that I better the life of the next person. Anything I can do to help, I will always do. Anything I can do to serve my people, I will always do. Anything I can do to better my environment, I will always do. 
you know, so that's my taking about the politics. Yes, of course, there are, in every profession there will be the good, the bad, the ugly, but I try to maintain an average life so that um, people will have confidence in whatever you say. People will have confidence in whatever you do. People will, will, will say that, yes, um, this person is this, this person is that, Buma is known for this, Buma is known for that, you know, so that's the kind of um, average life I, I, I try to live, you know. Yes, people will have different perceptions about you, some will say you're arrogant, some will say you're snobbish, some will say you're a nice person, some will say you're a good person, a lot of people will have different um, perception about you, but for you and for me, I believe that my conscience will always tell me I'm doing the right thing or I'm doing the wrong thing. Well, I, I can't really pinpoint to say um, this person influenced me. Frankly speaking, if my parents were alive, I don't think they would have um, agreed to me joining politics because they are always, especially my mom is always skeptical about politics, you know, but at that stage of my life in 2003, I felt there was a need to, to promote my community. I felt there was a need to give my community a leadership. My father was a community leader, a chief, and an administrator. I wanted to grow in his shoes. I wanted to fill that gap that he has left behind. I wanted to be that person that they will look at to say, this is Chief Yaya's son. He was a known figure, a philanthropy. So I wanted to get into that level of, um, 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 that level that he got to. So the only way I could do that was through politics. Things in the private sector, you can only fend for yourself and maybe your family. I wanted an avenue where I can reach out to people, where I can touch the lives of people. And by the special grace of God, I know that God has used me to touch a lot of lives. There's nothing wrong in politics, but I think that before joining politics, everybody should have an experience. <clears throat> what has helped me personally is my 12 years in the private sector. 12 years jumping from one position to the other, from one job function to the other, from one project site to the other, helped me and gave me that experience I need. So just coming out from school and jumping into politics, I don't think will help anybody. You need to work under people, you need to work with people, you need to serve people before you can say, I want to jump into politics. Politics is a bigger environment. You need to work in a smaller environment, smaller organizations. If you have gained some experience, some form of experience, you probably would have seen those issues or faced those issues in a smaller category. So I think that overall, our youth, be it Niger Delta, be it in the entire Nigeria, they should gain some, even if it is two, three, four years experience, as a, as a, a worker, as someone who is serving on, uh, uh, another person, anything, but that little experience is required for you to grow in politics. If I, if I have the opportunity, I will make sure the oil majors come to Niger Delta. You see the economy of Niger Delta is affected today because we don't have the oil majors residing in the Niger Delta again. If I have the opportunity, 
I will make sure and I will join others to make sure we have the oil companies, the oil servicing companies come back and reside in the Niger Delta, where the economy of Potakot, the economy of Wari, the economy of Uyo, and the economy of Bayasa will be improved upon. This is where the oil is. But most of the activities take place outside the Niger Delta. That is why we look as if we are impoverished. But we are not. We have the resources. But unfortunately, the politics of Nigeria does not favor us. That's why we don't have these major companies at our beck and corn. If we have them here, I don't think we will have youths in the Niger Delta looking for work. We shouldn't. God has blessed us with oil. God has blessed us with these resources. Why should we be looking for a job? How many are we in the Niger Delta? Why should we? There are so many things that we can do in the petroleum industry. Militancy won't have been our problem. Kidnapping won't have been our problem. But unfortunately, if you go outside Nigeria, you see that they have regions where you say, for example, if you go to Europe, you go to Aberdeen, you see that that, that region is oil. If you go to Canada, you go, there, are, there are regions that are meant for oil. In America, Houston, that's how it is. But here we're just known for the, having the resources. We don't have the big companies here to promote our economy. First and most important for me is the grace of God. I tell everybody who wants to know, I tell everybody who wants to care about me. I have the grace of God. It's not by my power, it's not, I'm not intelligent, I'm not smart. It's just the grace of God that has seen me all these years. The Bible says, I will give compassion unto whom I want to give. So it's not by I'm strength, I'm strong, that's why I am who I am. So for me, the ultimate goal is the grace of God, and I rely on that, and that's what I believe in. I believe that the grace of God upon my life will continue to reign, and that's all. Oh yeah, very obviously. Very obviously, when you're in politics, you know that it's not easy. If you're in politics, if you don't know how to gossip, they'll gossip about you. If you don't know how to tell lies, people will tell lies about you. If you don't know how to blackmail, people will blackmail you. So, so um, those are a lot of challenges that one has faced in my little years as a politician. But like I said, yes, they will gather. That's what the Bible tells me. They will gather in thousands. They will gather, but they will surely scatter. So. These blackmails will come, these challenges will come, these lies will come, these gossips will come. But just believe in yourself and believe in the path of truth. You will face challenges, but God will see you through. That's first as a, as a husband and as a father, what I want my kids to imbibe in them the truth and always to be responsible and hardworking. I tell them every day, you think you're enjoying, you're not enjoying anything. If you want to sustain this enjoyment, you think you are enjoying, you must work hard. So that's one thing I try to imbibe in them. For my community, the only thing I think that I should be remembered for is to say that I'm a peace lover. Even in politics, I hardly follow the path of war. I always want to make peace. I always want to make friends. I always want to make, create relationships so that tomorrow those relationships will work for me. So whatever I can do to promote my community, I will always do. Whatever I, I can do to beautify my community, I will always do. In Ogu, where, we come from, where I come from, we, we pride ourselves as one of the best planned 
communities in the Niger Delta. And that's because the people of Ugu have worked together to make sure our town is the way it is today. So I want to join, continuously join them in promoting that beauty of our community and also ensure that we have unity in our community. At the state level, God has helped me. I have served in one position or the other at one period or the other. I've also made sure I use it to create opportunities for the young ones to have careers, to create careers for themselves, and also promote the development of sports and other ventures in life. You know, so wherever you find yourself, just do the little you can. Make a difference. That's the most important thing. Before you leave that position, before you leave that at, uh, uh, environment, create a difference so that tomorrow people will say, this is what Bumayaye did when he was this, when he was that. He did this, he achieved this, he achieved that. But in all, I give the credit to my friend, my brother, my boss. Yes, I'm as one week. He has given me a bigger platform to achieve a lot of successes while I was Commissioner of Sports under him. He gave me the opportunity not just to, to serve as Commissioner, to, to create a number of a lot of firsts or a lot of number one positions. You know, he gave me an opportunity that I presided over the hosting of the African Wrestling Championship, something that has never been done in Nigeria before. Over 46 countries came all over the world, all over Africa, to Port Harcourt. I presided over that um, hosting. Several other opportunities he has given me, so I must give him the credit and the open heart he has, the free hand he has. He's someone who is very generous, someone who doesn't um, care about um, how much you spend, but are you, were you able to achieve results? You know, so I haven't given him that opportunity. I want to thank him publicly to say that he has made me someone who will enter into the annals of River State as a commissioner who did this or that. For that reason, he remains my hero. As an individual and as someone who has been in the saddle before, running sports in River State, the issue of grassroots uh, sports development is something that um, is there to the heart of any sports administrator, because that's the bedrock of um, um, sports development. If the foundation is not strong, it will be difficult for you to achieve anything. So, as an individual, while I was Commissioner of Sports, I made sure that we get the younger ones from the schools, train them, and develop them to become great ones, great athletes tomorrow. I, if I stand here to start mentioning those who have seen through from the younger, from their younger years to what they are now, who might not leave this place, but it's very paramount that sports development must always start from the grassroots. What we used to have those days, post primary school sports, primary school sports, um, is not very uh, popular these days, but with the help of private sector investors like channels, TV, and other um, organizations, you find out that that's, that um, area of development is coming back. So everybody must key in to it. It's not just government. The problem we have in this part of the world is that we depend on government doing everything. No. In other times, you find out that sports is for the private sector. Sports is big money. Sports is marketing. 
sports is branding. But here, we leave it for government. So if we take it to the next level, you find out that sports will become part and parcel of our daily lives. We will create that avenue for them. Not everybody will go to school and become doctors. Not everybody will become engineers. Some will be Michael Jordans of the world. Some will be Hussein Bolt. So, some, so, so there are several things that you can do with sports. You know, so if we imbibe that culture and make the environment uh, um, okay for our younger ones, they will excel. And how do we do it? We will start from the tender age. And that's why I must give credit to Yeso Wike once again. See the Real Madrid Football Academy he just commissioned. That was his baby. That was his pet project. Look at what that academy will do. I know the number of calls I've had that they want, a lot of parents want their kids to attend that school. <laughs> In the past, you find out that parents will say, no, my child will not play football. Though. What will they do with football? Now parents are, please now, how can we take the form? How do we, you see, that is the development we are talking about. That is this grassroots development we are talking about. It will start at that level. Yes, yes, I supervised the build, the construction, and then the, in, in fact, the contracting, the construction, the franchising of that project. So I know a lot about the project. So if I may, on the side, just answer that question, I think the River State government has a very good plan for that project. Uh, it might not be as expensive as they think. Um, the government is going to subsidize a lot of it, if not giving it out for free, but I know that they will subsidize a lot of it. So for those who are scared that it's going to be an expensive um, venture for them to attend that school, no. The only thing I tell them is that it's a specialized school, so it's not going to be a school for everybody. It's going to be a school for those that are talented in football. Every child can kick football, but not every child has the talent. Not every child has the skill. So it's going to be very competitive. As, 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 as an individual, I think that um, the, it's, it's very straightforward. The question is what the interventionist pro programs that River State or any other state will do if they want to be among the best of, of um, um, best in the, in the community of states in sports is that they must have a good youth program. And the youth program starts at the grassroots level, like we have said. For example, if it's in River State, you must have zonal championships, zonal competitions, where you will pick the young ones and bring them to the center, keep them in camp, train them, not when there's competition. If there's a competition in two years' time, they need to start now. Train them and prepare them towards, but it's a very expensive project, that's the truth. Because keeping them in camp, you pay them allowances, you will feed them, you will give them kits. You will maintain the facilities. It's a very expensive program. That's why I keep saying that. It's not a program for the youths alone, the government alone. It's a program that both private sector and public sector will always um, come together to achieve. And the, the, the better, it's even better for them to come together and achieve it because you see, when the youth is occupied, when he is busy with a sporting activity or one sporting activity or the other, you find out that issues of youth restiveness will be a thing of the past. Those days, when you go to sports council, you will see thousands of young ones, and they give them, small, even if it's just transport money. They, they are looking forward to the next day. You know, so that is something we need to bring back to our society. So that you see, people will get busy. People will look for the next opportunity to be 
famous, people will be thinking of, I want to be like this person. So how do I be like Usain Bolt? Is by training, is by seriousness, is by being committed to what I'm doing today. Yeah, I won't think of going to Carigon, you know. So we, st we have a lot to do. I, I, as, as, a, as a Christian, I, I can't say this is what I'm sure about. I believe that the will of God will always prevail. So I can't say this is what will happen or this is what I want to do or this is what will happen tomorrow or this is what I will do tomorrow. I don't know. It's the will of God. Anywhere the, my God directs me or anywhere my God says this is what would be, will be.